Olivia Baldwin, and I'm a visual artist based in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, today I'm here with some of my work at the gallery uh, where my studio is at a place called The Works. I love color. Uh, most of my work either begins with color or material, um, or color as material. And um, something I'm really interested in is um, trying to find a way for colors that seemingly don't belong together to, to live together in a way. Um, and so a lot of the decisions that I make are based on color. So if one color can stand alone or if it needs a counterweight and the sort of like the, the kind of power that color can carry in a work. I think a color's weight or a color's power is determined by its context. An orange may live differently against, um, against violet than it does against um, moth, for instance. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in playing with those relationships um, to different effects. When the pandemic hit, I lost access to my studio and I began making a lot of drawings at home at my kitchen table. And when I returned to the studio, I found that um, that sensibility carried into my new work. Um, that's certainly true of this piece, uh, which is titled Cinderblock Dehydrator Facing Ocean. The title comes from a recent poem of mine, so I do have a parallel writing practice. Um, in both practices, I'm very interested in fragments and parts and holes and remnants and how these, uh, these elements or parts of our lives can sort of intersect and recur. And in this work, it's composed of several parts, all of which were parts of um, past work. And so I often, if I make something and I'm not certain that it needs to um, be preserved forever, um, rather than storing it as a finished piece, I'll instead reuse uh, the material. Uh, so that's true of all of the canvas in this work. And you'll notice that um, it's not a single stretch piece, but it's composed of several parts. And you can see uh, the edges are sort of, are become important in the way they, um, they sort of resist the rectangle. And this work is titled Trade Pickles for Pie, uh, which is also a line taken from a poem. And this is composed from very disparate elements um, so I'll often work on the ground and I'll layer parts and sort of uh, layer parts, cut them up, pull them apart. And trying to get at this idea of, of marrying pieces that maybe don't seem to belong together. I recently attended a residency at the Artist Association of Nantucket. And as I was preparing for the residency, I was thinking about what kind of work I could make there. And so I thought, okay, I'll make flying paintings. I'll make paintings that are also kites. And uh, through discussions with friends, I became interested in that gesture as a very hopeful one. And my initial uh, attempts failed quite a bit. I would bring the, the work to the beach. I would try to fly them, but um, as of now, nothing has taken flight. Um, but in that period, a very dear friend sent me a sail. So this is the sail, and I ended up cutting it up into a few pieces. And um, I found that because you know a sail is water resistant, um, the paint, of course, didn't settle in the same way that it would on you know cotton canvas. Um, so that, that sort of dictated, in part, the geometry of the piece. I was also thinking about and interested in the history of geometry in kites and um, kind of interested in how I could build the geometry in through the process. So many of the divisions you see, um, or of the, much of the geometry you see, is actually born from folding and painting and folding and painting. When 
thing that interests me about working unstretched is that there is a degree of fluidity um, in the work built in. So depending on how I hang the piece, it may fall differently. And the whole composition may change as a result of that. And, um, and they also offer an opportunity to really work with light and shadow and negative space um, in the case of the cutouts so that the, the work is not um, limited to the canvas itself, but extends beyond it. Often when I work on a piece, I'll work on it on the ground, on the wall, maybe supported by some kind of structure. So it's, it's constantly in motion, and, and I find that the work is sort of informed by that movement. And something I really like about pastels um, is that they're kind of fuzzy, are kind of changeable, and I'm often striving for a similar quality in the work. So to find to find the work so that it's at a point where it's maybe still moving.